Welcome to the European Parliamentary Research Service podcasts. Water scarcity is a global problem, and while the situation is not yet critical in Europe, it could become one day. So, what is the EU doing about it? Let's look at the extent of the problem and the solutions available. Stay with us. Droughts and water scarcity are no longer rare or extreme events in Europe. Actually, about 20% of the European territory and 30% of Europeans are affected by water stress, especially in southern Europe, but also around some river basins in western and central Europe. And climate change will only make matters worse, increasing the frequency of extreme events and making the south even drier. So, what can the EU do about it? Well, it's clear that urgent action is needed. And that means making sure that we have more good quality water available and that we use less of it. So where do we get more water from? With the most obvious sources already tapped, we need to look at the atmosphere and the ocean. Now, desalination is not a new idea and its issues mean it's not a perfect solution even if new techniques may help. As for atmospheric water generation, it's definitely a promising field, though still in the nascent stage. So it won't get us out of trouble immediately. Other, more out-of-the-box ideas have also been proposed, such as seeding clouds or harvesting icebergs. But one thing is clear, increasing fresh water supply won't be easy. So we may need to shift our efforts to water recycling and reuse, as they do, for example, in Singapore. And as one of the major uses of water, agriculture has a big role to play. And solutions may include using more efficient irrigation systems, favoring crops that are better adapted to changing water availability, or developing drought-resistant strains. However, a large part of the solution may lie in going back to nature. Now, what does that mean? It means using nature-based solutions to improve both the quantity and the quality of fresh water, as well as resilience to climate change. Practical examples of this are increasing the infiltration and storage capacity of wetland soils or to protect groundwater from contamination by removing sediments and pollutants. But despite its growing use, direct investment in nature-based solutions still represents less than 1% of total investment in water resources, infrastructure and management worldwide. The Water Framework Directive is the EU's main tool to tackle water stress, but better and faster implementation, as well as coordination with other environmental strategies and sectoral policies, is key to ensure that all Europeans have access to good quality and sufficient water. And because there is no green without blue, many members of the European Parliament, together with the European Economic and Social Committee, are calling for a European Blue Deal and a common EU approach to water. The problem is global, but it is increasingly concerning our continent. And without action, it could have far-reaching implications for food security, the environment, human health, as well as economic, social and political stability in the world. Want to know more? Check out Antonio Valle and Yogita Lekavicciute's full policy brief on the EPRS website or in our app. This is a European Parliamentary Research Service podcast. Thanks for listening.